I've always loved seeing him over the years. He's the presenter of uh, Nunhead American Radio on, uh, yeah, a hugely popular show on Resonance. And um, uh, will you please welcome the naked hostility and self-loathing of Lewis Schaefer. That's uh, Bridget Christie's husband. <laughs> okay, now Bridget Christie's hot and funny. Good, hey, good to see you. I recognize somebody that I know. That's a small country. Anyway, my name is... It is. It's small. I'm not from around here, really. And uh, my name is Lewis Schaefer. And I, the reason I'm here is because I fell in love with a British woman. Because uh, British women are the most beautiful women in the world. Or maybe not the most beautiful, but the easiest. And uh, the easiest one fell in love with me. She ignored the facts. All right, so thanks for coming. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the default headliner. I'm basically, you hate me. Because it's like, that guy was the funny. You should end on that. It should end on something funny. And then there's me. I'm, I'm basically... I'm fucked. I'm fucked, basically. I'm fucked because I'm an American. You hate me. I don't know if you hate me already. You should like me because it's 9-11 day. If you, don't like, if you don't like me, if you don't like me today, when are you going to like me? Really? People didn't like me in America either. So they didn't like me. Anyway, I've been, uh, lost a good friend in 9-11. I remember telling my friend, I said, Muhammad, stay in flight school. Stay in flight school. Practice the landings, Muhammad. Practice the landings. Is that too soon? Is it too soon for that? I can make that joke because 9-11 never happened. It never happened. And it's a comedian and a judge by how soon they get the first joke on a difficult subject in. How soon they get the, I told the first joke about Kate and Je about the Madeline McCann's disappearance. The first joke about Madeline McCann's disappearance the day before I kidnapped her. And uh, that's too early. That's too early. Is that too early in the show for this? I think that is. That is, it's too early. You hate me already. I hate myself. I hate myself that I'm so underprepared for this fucking shit. I should have been prepared. I should have been. This is the first benefit I've done. I haven't done a benefit in 10 fucking years. 10 years. I've been in this country 13, 13 years I've been here with you people. It took me a long time to realize how shit you are. How shit. You're the worst fucking audiences in the world. You think you're the funniest people. You're not. You're not funny. You're not even a good audience. You're not. You're not. Doing comedy for you is like making love to a woman in a coma. I'm going to keep on going because I'm paid to do I'm not even paid to do this. I got to fuck the radio show. This is the last time I'm going to be on the radio show after this debacle. It's called Nunhead American Radio. Nunhead. Yeah, you said Chris Dixon. Good to see you. I know the fucking audience here. I know the audience. That's it's a small, shitty fucking island off the coast of America. And if America wants you to go, you go. You go. You know, they ask questions later. It's like your buddy said, you know your buddy's gonna fuck you up. You know your buddy's drunk and stupid, but you gotta go. You gotta go. I don't wanna go either. Good to see you. I knew nothing about you people. I knew not good to see you. I knew another person that I know. What is fucking wrong with this thing? It's just playing for people who know me and don't like me. Who know me and don't, I don't like you, you old. Anyway, the point is, I knew nothing about this country when I got here. I've been here for 13 years. I live in a place called Nunhead. People always ask, yes, Nunhead. They ask me about Nunhead. No, they don't. They don't give a shit. It's, it's, I wish I was back in New York, but I married my manager, Ed Burns' manager. I married my manager, which was a mistake. Which was a mistake. Which was a mistake, because when you, when you fuck up, you need a divorce lawyer and a uh, entertainment lawyer. It's just a whole, it's a whole mess. Is that too personal? Is that too personal? I wish I was Simon Amstel. He's so young and good looking. He's so young. It makes you gay. It makes you gay. It makes you gay. I'm in my age. I'm, I'm not gay. I'm not gay, but I'm so old. I'm 56. I look amazing, though. Because I'm, I'm an American. I've got hope. I've got hope. Not like you people who are dead. Who are dead. You're the deadest. The deadest race of people. You should be happy America wants you to bomb somebody. That somebody wants you long. That's a black man. Sorry. <laughs> that too much. Was that too much? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Anyway. No, no, no. I've seen racism. That's not racism. I'm from New York. I know racism. I've seen the horrors of racism with my own eyes because I'm a Klan member. So I know, I know the shit that happens. I hate Jews. I hate Jews. Not all Jews, just my parents. Those two Jews. Those yibba the yibba the Jews. I'm a Jew. Jew! Are you Jewish? 
No, it's horrible to look Jewish and not to be Jewish. <laughs> you laughed at that, that's anti-Semitism. <laughs> Where was I? I'm pretty funny. And, uh, <laughs> I surprised myself. I surprised, I surprised myself. Anyway, so what was I saying that was of interest? <laughs> well, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Don't heckle me, because I know how to handle hecklers. I just start crying. I just start crying. No, gay! Gay! People thought that I was gay in America because I'm a looker. I'm a looker. Yeah, I'm a looker! Or as they call that in the States, a peeping Tom or a stalker. And uh, I'm, a looker. I'm a looker! People, I was bullied! I was, because I was so good looking, I was bullied! I was, I was bullied as a child. I was bullied at school! I was home educated. And, uh, and, <laughs> I was home educated. And every summer I'd go to the beach in New York, right? New York City in America, the greatest country, the greatest, whatever, greatest. And, uh, would chase after me and they'd say, Louis Schaefer, you're gay, you're gay, because I'm a good looking kid, very cute kid. Some of the older guys might have seen pictures of me on the internet. And, uh, and uh, they didn't have internet back then. My parents went door to door knocking, do you want to see pictures of my naked kid? Fucking shit. <laughs> How embarrassing is that shit? Anyway, anyway, so I'm a little kid, I'm walking along the beach in New York, hot summer day, kids are chasing after me. They're chasing after me saying, Louis Schaefer's gay. Louis Schaefer's gay. You know how kids can be? The bullies are chasing. Saying, Louis Schaefer's gay. They're kicking sand on my blue blazer. They're saying, Louis Schaefer's gay. Kicking sand on the blue blazer. I'm wondering, why are the kids saying I'm gay? I remember asking my mommies, my two mommies, why are these kids <laughs> saying I'm gay? I, I'll never forget. They comforted me. They said, princess. They said, princess. They're just, they're just jealous of you because you've got the Barbie camper and those guys don't. And, um, I tell that joke in America. Believe it or not, that's a joke. And <laughs> I tell that joke in America, and they laugh at a different place. Than the, you people laugh like a kid being called princess, right? That's funny here. Maybe the royal family connections or something. But in America, they laugh at the idea of a kid walking along the beach on a hot summer day wearing a blue blazer. Right? That's funny in America. Here, that's a perfectly reasonable clothing choice in the middle of summertime. Of course, you've got to be fully fucking dressed. Red fucking... Exactly. This is place is just fucking. That's why you're dead because you're frozen. You're frozen. You're in a comedy show. Your arms are crossed. Your arm. Exactly. Look at you people. You can't even fucking enjoy yourselves. This is what happened. I came here because I thought I was gonna be a big star. I thought I was gonna be loved by you people. I thought you're gonna love. You don't. You can't love. You're incapable of love. You're incapable. I sit here. I'm begging you to love me. Please. I've been doing. 